to be the one who goes hard working to see it all through i'm not gonna wait around these feet are gonna hit the ground do it with all of my heart i'm gonna do whatever it takes to make it happen whatever it takes i'm gonna give it my all eliminate all distractions every day no matter the stakes i'm gonna do whatever it takes to make it happen whatever it takes i'm gonna give it my all eliminate all distractions every day no matter the stakes whatever it takes be a real astronaut, but I still know a lot about initiative. Initiative is seeing what needs to be done and doing it. So it's doing what needs to be done. Yes. But first you have to see what needs to be done. You have to look for the needs around you. They know all about this in space travel. Let's say for instance, they decide to go from the earth to the moon. They don't just get in their rockets, strap themselves in, and take off. No. Hey, fun. How do I get to the moon? No. They spend months, even years, planning for every trip. They prepare for things that might go wrong and have backup plans in place to help protect them. They look out for things that might get in their way, like other aircrafts or satellites. Ah, oh, look out for that asteroid! Oh, that was a close one. They decide before they even start the trip exactly where they're gonna go and how they're gonna get there. They know exact. Oh man, I ruined the moon. That was not part of the plan. But good thing I had a backup plan. This moon is much sturdier. <laughs> In today's story, we'll hear more about Nehemiah, who had a plan to make the city of Jerusalem stronger. And there was more to that plan than just rebuilding the wall. Nehemiah could have used a smartphone. Knock knock, who's there? It's phone. Hey, phone, question. How do I make Jerusalem stronger? Or maybe not. I'll see you in a few. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, 
we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Nehemiah had traveled all the way from the king's palace of Persia to the broken down city of Jerusalem. And there, with God's help, he rallied all the Jews living there to begin the epic job of rebuilding that city's walls. Who's with me? I say, let's start rebuilding. At first, the work went well. Each family or group took a different part of the wall to work on. We're making record time. Nehemiah and the people even managed to ignore taunts and threats from neighboring nations who did not want to see that wall rebuilt. Uh, if a fox climbs on that pathetic thing, it'll fall right down. <laughs> the God of heaven will give us success. So it seemed like nothing was going to stop this big project until new trouble showed up. From inside the walls, a group of Jews in ragged cloaks came to look for Nehemiah where he was working on the wall. There's not enough food for everyone. We're, we're being forced to sell our fields and vineyards just to buy grain. There's hardly enough to keep us alive. The king's taxes are high. We have to borrow money, but, but then we can't even pay the high interest. Interest was extra money the people had to pay back. It was so high they could hardly keep any of the money they made. Who's making you do this? Other Jews, our own relatives. We even had to send our children to work for them as slaves. We have nothing left. Please help us. This is not right. It's not right at all. I'll take care of it. <sighs> Nehemiah was so angry that he didn't trust himself to act in the moment. Instead, he thought it over for a time. God, what do I do about this? His own people were mistreating those who had less. Nehemiah took this so seriously, he stopped work on the wall to call together the Jewish nobles and officials. What's this all about? Ah, better be good. Making us lose all this work time. It's not good. It's bad. You're charging your own people interest. It's not like it's that much. I mean, we can't loan money for free, right? Do you have to ask me this? Think about it. Many Jewish people were sold as slaves to other nations, and we had to buy them back and bring them home. Now, you're charging so much interest, they are forced to become slaves again. Oh. No one could argue with Nehemiah. They listened quietly to his next words. What you're doing is not right. We have to show respect for God. Look, I am lending money and grain to the people who need it. And so are my relatives, but we aren't charging any interest. So, what should we do now? If you've taken anything in payment, give it back. Fields, vineyards, olive groves, houses, give it all back. Even the interest that you've charged, do it now. God moved in the hearts of the people, because instead of arguing, they agreed. We'll give it back. We won't make them give us anything else. We'll do just as you say. Very good. Nehemiah sent for the priests so that the nobles and officials could make this promise before God. You must keep this promise, or God will deal with you. Amen. Amen. Immediately, the officials did as they said. Here are the papers. The vineyard is yours again. Oh, thank you. I've been working years to get it ready for a good harvest. I took too much. This is yours. This means my son can come home now. So once the nobles and officials made everything right, work on the wall began again, faster and stronger than before, now that everyone had what they needed. And Nehemiah continued to show his people how to treat each other, even though King Artaxerxes had appointed him governor. You know, all the other governors made the people pay them silver and give them lots of food and stuff, even land. That's too heavy a load to put on the people. Instead, Nehemiah dedicated himself to working on the wall. In fact, he even invited 150 people to eat food at his own table. Throughout his life, he always looked for ways to treat people fairly and make things right. The city of Jerusalem was in trouble. 
because the walls had been broken down. But that wasn't the only thing that was broken. Nehemiah looked and saw that some of his people were being treated unfairly because they were poor. And he did something about it. He stood up for them and worked to make things more fair. Initiative starts with seeing what needs to be done. And more often than not, it starts with seeing who needs to be helped and what needs to be made right. That's one of the reasons Jesus is so amazing. He saw people. He showed people how valuable they were by loving them no matter what. And he inspired them to love others. We're called to love people too. We should stand up for people who are being treated unfairly because of the way they look or where they're from or how much money they have or what they believe in. If you've ever been treated unfairly, then you know how it feels. It's not good, but maybe you also know how it feels when someone stands up for you, when someone's on your side. Standing up for people is one way we can make things more fair. We can make things right. And it's one way we can show others the love God has for the world. So here's the one thing to remember today. Look for ways to make things right. Make a plan. Decide before you start your day that you're going to look for the needs around you. And speaking of needs, looks like I'm gonna need another moon. This one's just too delicious. <laughs> mm. This moon tastes like cheese. I don't know. I'll see you next time. Oh, there goes my face up.